The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing as under of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 John 2.17, the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. John 15.6-7 and 10, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Hebrews 10.38 now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Matthew six nineteen to 21 Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Psalm 96, 8 Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. Proverbs 22, 9, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Luke 16, 10 to 11, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Second Corinthians 9, 6-7, But this I say, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Second Chronicles 31.5 As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil and honey, and of all the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. Before anything else, before beginning our Bible study today, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, be sure you have named your sins privately to God the Father. First John 1 John 1.9 again says, If we confess our known sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our known sins and to cleanse us from all unknown or forgotten sins and righteousness. After you do that, you will be in fellowship with God, filled with the Holy Spirit, and ready to learn Bible doctrine from the Word of God. 
However, if you have never personally believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the issue you are facing is not naming or confessing your sins. The issue is faith alone in Christ alone. John 3.36 says, He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the command to believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of making use of this opportunity once again of assembling ourselves together in obedience to your word. We thank you for this Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry. Use this ministry in spreading the gospel and in spreading your word to edify the body of Christ. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Well, we welcome everyone to our Bible study today, our subscribers and our friends and our fellow believers. Today, we have a new topic, and this is another interesting topic, the doctrine of dying grace. Okay, without much ado, we will start our study. First of all, it is but natural to describe a person's death as an accident. But as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and as a child of God through faith in Him, there are no accidents because in the Christian life there is no such thing. Now God has a purpose for keeping the believer alive on this earth, but He also has a purpose for taking any of us home to heaven at just the right time. A believer who dies physically has gone home at the right time, and that is God's perfect timing. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 20 says, There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die. A believer who dies is taken home to heaven to prepare him or her and others for death just as the believer who dies was prepared for death. You see, life hangs by a very slender thread, and that thread can be snapped at any time, at any moment. None of us really knows when death will come. According to James 4.14, you don't even know what tomorrow will bring, what your life will be. For you are like a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. Remember, God's timing is perfect, and He is the one who decides the time, the manner, and the place of our death. You know, that one day in the future, you will die. Knowing that you have no control at all over the time or manner of your death gives you great confidence, for death and resurrection are strictly the Lord's victory. During our lifetime, we make many decisions, because all of life is decision-making. Some are good decisions, some are bad decisions, but there is only one decision that we make during our life to
to prepare us for that moment when we depart from this life. This will be the greatest decision that prepares us for death and dying. One reason any believer dies is so all of us who are left, left behind might understand the importance of eternal salvation through personal faith in Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 A believer dies so you might have a chance for eternal life. Of course, it's not the believer who gives us eternal life. A believer's death gives us a chance to receive eternal life from God. The Lord often takes people from this life so others might hear the gospel message. Time as we know it is just a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. Therefore, being prepared for death should be our number one priority. And when we consider it as our number one priority, there is only one preparation for it, faith alone in Christ alone. To all who have made the decision to believe in Jesus Christ, let it be known that remembering a loved one who has died is to celebrate a victory, a victory over death. You know what? A believer who dies physically is very much alive. Right at this moment, a believer who dies is very much alive. Therefore, we celebrate a victory, and I am doing exactly what any believer would want me to do, telling his loved ones and friends that he loves them and wants them to be with him forever in heaven. For each one of us then, there is only one decision by which we prepare for death and dying and by which we enter into eternal life. If a believer had now eternal life, each one of us has the opportunity to also have it through faith alone, in Christ alone. Acts 16.31 always says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This is a verse that the believer who dies knew so well while he or she was still with us. He truly believes in Christ that right now that believer is in a far greater place that can never be found here on earth. Yes, that believer who died is in a place where things are far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think. Ephesians 3.20 Thus, to be prepared for death is to be prepared for this life and the life after death, eternal life. The believer who died was such a wonderful person as we have known him probably, personally, as a human being. As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that believer Love the Lord and the Word of God. So let us remember this. There are no accidents in the Christian life. The believer who died, his death is no accident. It was the Lord's time to take him home so you might understand what he believed in. He wanted you to believe he loved you so much and in that sense, he died so you could hear the message, how to be prepared for death. So I repeat, a believer's death was no accident, just as it is no accident that you are here right now listening to this message. You know what? You are here for a purpose. The believer who just died wants you to be prepared for death. 
even as he was. That believer who was taken by God wants to see you forever in heaven. His death will be meaningful to you if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation and no one else. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation on any other under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Then the Lord can transfer you to heaven when he decides the time, the manner, and the place of your death. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It is so important that you understand that that believer who just died under circumstances which would cause you to think about death. So ask yourself this question, am I prepared for death? or not. That believer who just left us was prepared and he is now with the Lord. While we will miss him very much, the Lord had an infinitely greater plan for his life, that he might depart from this life, that he might go through his valley of the shadow, Psalm 23, 4, quickly and arrive in heaven. Now you have the opportunity to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. And to that believer's family and friends, life must go on. It is true there is great sorrow and grief, and we know how they will miss that believer. Just as they have been united on earth, so they will be united forever in heaven. This is not goodbye forever. This is see you later. Yes, they will see him again. They will all be united again in heaven in God's perfect time. They will see and understand and know for all eternity that God had a purpose and a reason for taking him home in heaven. But listen. That believer who just died did not die in vain. God had a purpose, and that purpose was fulfilled when he took that believer home. At this moment, in the privacy of your soul, forming the sentences in thought only, inaudibly, you can tell God the Father that you are believing in Jesus Christ, and in that moment, you possess eternal life and face the dying grace. So simple, isn't it? In that moment, you have assurance and guarantee of victory over death. This is your privilege, this is your privacy, and your opportunity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time where you showed us how fragile life is. That what you said in your word, life is just a vapor, that it can just vanish away any time. May the death of that believer remind us that life indeed is fragile and short, and that we may be challenged to prepare ourselves for the next life by appropriating ourselves to your perfect plan. Firstly, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then to study your precious word. Thus, reach our goal, which is spiritual maturity. And by then, we can have the assurance of a home in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.